this is going to be a quick review over osmosis and diffusion for anatomy class. So remember, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration until we reach equilibrium. So in the diagram here, we have the solute in red and the solvent in blue. And the solute is, we could pretend like that's like a dye that's been dropped into the water and it goes from an area of greater concentration using Brownian motion and just uh, random movement and kinetic energy to move from an area of the greater concentration to lesser concentration throughout the solution until we reach what's called dynamic equilibrium, where there's equal numbers of those molecules spread out along, uh, among the solution. Osmosis is the movement of water across a membrane. So remember that um, water, just like anything that goes through diffusion, is going to move from an area of greater to an area of lesser concentration. And in this YouTube that we have here, and it's not the YouTube video, if you notice, it's actually a YouTube, that's what they call it. And so there's a semi-permeable membrane here in the middle, and we have solute molecules in purple, and the water's in blue. So generally what would happen is we would move from an area of greater concentration, the solute's an area of lesser concentration. Well, because this membrane's semi-permeable, the solute can't move through it. So what happens instead is water moves from an area of greater concentration to lesser concentration, and you see a movement like this. And if you notice, now if this were Kool-Aid, for example, and this were a Kool-Aid that was really strong, and this is weak Kool-Aid, if you let this set, eventually this Kool-Aid is going to be the same strength as this Kool-Aid here because water moved from an area of greater to lesser concentration until equilibrium was reached. All right, the effect of water on cells. Hyper, hypo, and isotonic solutions. So let's talk about a hypertonic environment. This one we have high solute and low water. Hypotonic is high water, low solute. And isotonic means equal amounts of water and equal amounts of solute. So in this example, what we have are plant and animal cells. We're going to concentrate on the animal cells up here. This is a hypertonic solution. So a hypertonic solution, there's less concentration of water on the outside, so water's going to go from an area of greater concentration to lesser concentration, and the cell's going to shrivel. In an isotonic solution, water's going to go back and forth because it's equally balanced, and it's just going to happen randomly, and you're not going to see an overall change in the cell. In a hypotonic solution, the concentration of water is less inside the cell than it is outside the cell, so water is going to go from an area of greater to lesser concentration. It's going to go into the cell, and this is called lysis, or the cell lysing, because it actually can explode if the pressure gets too great, trying to equalize itself, the water pressure on the out, or the water concentration on the outside. All right, let's look at transportation. We have passive and active. Remember that passive transport does not require extra energy. This is just going with the flow like you're going on a float trip. So we have passive transport. Um, that's going to go from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, and we have um, molecules that help those out across the semi-permeable membrane of a cell membrane. Active transport goes against the grain. If you notice, the concentration here is actually greater inside the cell, but active transport is going to pump these ions across it, across the cell membrane into the cell where the higher concentration is. And this is like going on a float trip and uh, trying to paddle upstream instead of floating, and that requires energy. And your, your cells need these inside. There's not, this just doesn't happen randomly, but um, there's a purpose for it. But it does require ATP and requires energy to go against that grain. Facilitated diffusion, facilitate means to help. So we have these molecules within the cell membrane, like we have here and here, these protein molecules, and they help assist um, molecules going across the cell membrane. And when it is actually going with regular diffusion, but they're going through um, the molecule, through the protein molecule, it's called facilitated diffusion because it helps them get through there quicker. All right, let's look at the effect of water on red blood cells. Um, and this just goes along with the hyper, hypo, and isotonic solutions. So if we put a blood cell in a hypertonic solution, water is going to come out because there's a high solute concentration outside, a low solute concentration inside, so the water concentration is higher on the inside. Water is going to go from higher to lesser concentration. It's going to go out and it's going to crenate the red blood cell or become crenated, which means it's going to shrivel up. This is what a regular 
red blood cell looks like. It's kind of got a dip in the center of it, and it's called biconcave. Isotonic solution, you're not going to see a difference in the overall concentration. In a hypotonic solution, water is going to go from the outside inside because the water concentration is greater outside and cause the cell to swell up. Just more examples that you can go through and look at for examples of that. Um, endo and exocytosis. So sometimes we have things that need to come into the cell and go out of the cell, and they're actually too large. So exo is out. So we have a vesicle that is going to fuse with the membrane, the double uh, lipid bilayer membrane, and actually be released out of the cell. Or it can fold in and take large particles or lots of particles in at one time, and that's called endocytosis. If it takes in liquid, it's called pinocytosis, and if it takes in solid, it's called phagocytosis. And we also have receptor-mediated endocytosis, and that's just when there's specific particles that go into the cell and the cell binds to them first.